again, was made in 2007. And I'm not saying this was not a, uh, a spell or a hex that, to bring it down. It was simply a prediction that I thought might come true considering um, my brother was one of those mortgage loan officers out destroying the universe. Uh, and I, I just thought this can't last, this bubble can't last. So um, in a sense, I, I, I began practicing a kind of divination within the art world. Forms of magic, um, for the most part, are personal. Most of the time, magic is uh, kind of, I wouldn't say a selfish act, but it's for the material gain of the operator and to bring things and make them happen. But um, when the new museum situation arose, um, I sort of took all those things that I've been doing and threw them together in one monster operation. And so there is an angular form inside this drawing which contains the major uh, malevolent elements. There's a few outside. And it's generally wrong with um, you know, good spirits in the art world. Um, and this one, this definitely caused a massive controversy. Um, I, I'm sort of shocked by the power of art, you know? And, and it seems sometimes like it uh, really operates like magic. And so around this point, um, as an artist, it's, you know, it sort of achieved a kind of ridiculous power compared to what I had. My, my field of operation had grown much larger. Um, if we move on, um, this was another drawing that, that invoked so many specific names that it drew the wrath of a number of people, a number of uh, sort of angry spirits. Um, and you know, this is, it's at this point that I really uh, began to acknowledge that there was some sort of sorcery really involved with um, the practice. Now, magic may be logical, but it could just be based on a flawed understanding of the world, mistaken correlation for causation. Um, you know, uh, or magic is often seen as a neurosis, bad science, or maybe just anxiety relief. Uh, perhaps this composite magic is uh, a, a way of understanding what's going on in the world, if we, uh, or at least in the art world. We move on. Let's see what else we have. And so the last uh, piece that I had done was a cosmology of, of art world figures and entities, which I showed at Postmasters. And I've been trying to make a body of work that brings together um, the elements of magic that are very similar to the art world in the practice. Um, and oh, that is the last slide. And I have no idea how long it's been going on for. 40 minutes. 40 minutes? Is that 40 minutes? Yeah. Something like that. That's exactly what we wanted. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for coming. And if there's um, questions, we can. And at this point, I'm not going to say, well, you might want to stay in your circles if you ask specific questions. But after that, <laughs> um, you can get out of the salt circle. So. How do you see the relationship between your theories on sorcery and alchemy? Um, I think basically artists are practicing magic all the time. I think art is magic in reality. And a sculptor might be closer to an alchemist. Like I think Jeff Means is a powerful alchemist. He turns common metals into what amounts to gold. I mean, he takes titanium and turns it into $20 million. Um, what about painters? And he's aligned. He's, uh, painters can be alchemists. Mixing basic, turning oils and pigments and common earth elements into incredibly valuable objects, phenomenal valuable objects. But they're also illusions. You know, most artists cast an illusion where, where the shadow, the, the object that is made, is far outweighs the substance of the materials. You know, um, when thoughts are things, when desire realizes its object, and I believe you know most artists are practicing this. They're trying to project their desires into a material form to cause uh, some effect, some material change in the world, whether it's just to influence somebody else's mind or their ideas. Uh, you know, that's one aspect of art. I think you know, uh, there's performance art, performance stage magic.